Hello and welcome back to the Joyful Soul Creates. Charlotte here with the second of our monthly Same Set Syndrome collaborations. And this month we are being sponsored by Not Too Shabby. Here you can see the stamp set I'm going to be using, which is the Summertime Buddies stamp set. And there's some great examples of how to use this on the shop page. This month in the hop there are actually two stamp sets, so half of us will be using this stamp set and the other half will be using the pop in a cup stamp set. So be sure to hop through and see all the examples for both of those. I was inspired by this stamp set to create three beach backgrounds and I'm going to show you how I made each of those. The first background is going to be using alcohol inks and I will be using them on vellum which is a nice inexpensive alternative to Upo paper. And I do like to put gloves on when I'm working with alcohol inks and I also made sure I had a window open so it was well ventilated before I started. I began by putting my blending solution down in the area I wanted to create the sand portion of my ink and putting that down just makes sure that everything's going to be moving nicely. And then I have two shades of yellow alcohol inks. These are Sunshine Yellow and Dandelion. And I'm just going to be dripping these over and moving them around both with my little air puffer, which is from a camera cleaning kit, and also just with gravity by lifting the panel and letting the color run. I didn't want any particularly harsh edges. I want it to be quite soft looking and I think I did manage to achieve that. But you can clearly see why I chose to use the gloves and have this panel of chipboard below my vellum, just because it does get quite messy working with this. Also, the vellum did curl a bit as I was working, but it will flatten out nicely afterwards, so it's not a problem. Once I'd finished the sand portion, I moved on to the C and I'm again laying in first the blending solution and then my ink, which I have pistachio and stream and also tranquil, which is a pearl ink. So it gives some really nice shimmer and shine. And again, I'm putting on layers of the color and letting gravity move it and moving it around with my air puffer and just keeping on working and layering until I am happy with it. I did think I would try and put some sea foam by lightening the area between the blue and the yellow and I didn't really like how that worked so I do go back and cover that up with just more of the blue ink to even it out again. I didn't have much luck actually creating sea foam on these backgrounds but I did try. So that's the first background. Then we are going to move on to the second background which is made with ink blending and I'm starting with a piece of craft card which means I don't have to ink blend the sand because it's already there and I got this idea from actually watching a video by Carol who is on my Christmas craft creations design team and I will link to her channel her video if you would like to see that. So I'm using distress oxides for my ink blending. I have tumble glass, mermaid lagoon and stormy sky. I started by putting the tumble glass down all over the area I wanted my sea to be, moved on to the mermaid lagoon, not going quite the whole distance, and then the stormy sky for even less space. And this means it's darker in the corner and fades out to a lighter blue as it gets closer to the sand. I did bring in some white pigment ink to attempt to add the sea foam. I really do not like this pigment ink I have. It does not give good coverage and I struggled with it a bit, but I tried and it makes a slight difference at least. And here you can see how that looks. I then later had the idea of using a white gel pen to add sea foam. And I really wish I had not done this because I much preferred how the panel looked without this. It's not terrible, I guess it's kind of an abstract look of the sea foam and the edges of the wave crashing on the shore and so on. But yeah, I wish I hadn't added it. I used three sizes of white gel pen, so I used the widest one for the area right next to the beach. I used a medium sized one for the next line of sea foam. And then I used my narrowest one for the last one. And yeah, I didn't like that. I tried ink blending over it and it didn't help. So I just had to put up with it. 
The third background I'm going to make is with watercolouring. I attempted to stretch my watercolour paper. This is the first time I've done this and it kind of worked I think. I didn't get quite as much warping as I was painting so I think I will continue to do that in future. I'm using Gansai Tambi watercolour paints and I have put the numbers on screen so you can see exactly what colours I am using. I started by putting down clear water and then adding in my colour and I'm just working in layers, building it up and drying in between with the cooler setting of my wow heat tool. On this layer I kind of tried to add the like waves of colour you sometimes get in the sand from where the waves have been over it. I felt it was a bit too harsh though the edges there so on the next layer after drying it I went in and kind of blended it out a bit more again. I also tried to keep it darkest towards the waterline because the wet sand is going to be darker than the dry sand. And once I was happy with the sand I did also add flicks of each of the three sand colours onto it just to give it a bit more texture. So just tapping and splattering with a little paintbrush to add some extra interest there. Using a small paintbrush means it is smaller splatters which is exactly what I wanted for giving the impression of it being sand. Then I brought in some blues and again I'm going to paint over the area I want my water to be just with some clean clear water and I will first go in with this kind of aqua blue and I'm just using this for an underwash which will just add that kind of greeny blueiness below and add more depth to the colour. As I did with my ink blending I'm working by putting the lightest colour all the way across and then the medium colour not quite all the way and just going less and less far with each of the colours and I'm letting the colour move as it will to be kind of natural movement to it. I let that layer dry naturally because my camera died so I figured I may as well whilst it was charging and then came back and continued to add layers and build up the depth of colour of that water and I'm trying to give shape to the water as I go so that it has kind of that natural wave shape and isn't too straight as the colours change. I did bring in a darker blue because I wasn't getting quite the depth I wanted at that furthest away corner and again I would just keep working adding layers drying with my heat gun and going back and forth building up the colors until I am happy with how that looks. One thing I really like about this heat gun is that it does have the two speed settings so the first setting the cooler setting is perfect for drying watercolors and the second setting is perfect for your heat embossing. Here I've now bought in a silvery white and a regular white and I'm using these to do my sea foam because I had not learnt from the difficulties of the sea foam on the previous cards. This one actually worked though and I really really like how it came out. It took me quite a while, I kept working in layers, I picked some up with a paper towel when I wasn't quite happy with it and I just kept going through building it up, I switched to a smaller brush to get the silvery colour right on the edge of the sea foam and just kept working it until I was happy with it. I did try to keep the further back sea foam a bit paler than the ones right up on the edge of the beach and I did also use my paintbrush to kind of soften the back edge of the sea foam on the further back waves just to make it blend into the rest of the water a bit better. And I really think this gives the look of waves crashing against the beach and I'm really really happy with how this one turned out. Especially seeing as I don't feel like I'm a very good watercolourist, I really enjoyed the process of this and I think it went pretty well. Has me feeling good about trying more watercolouring in the future. Whilst I'm finishing off this painting I will briefly talk a bit about the hop so you will find the link to the next stop on the hop down below. As I previously mentioned this is sponsored by Not Too Shabby this time around and we have a $25 gift certificate going to one random commenter that's picked from all the comments left on all the stops on the hop so the more stops you comment on the more chance you have of winning. Please do actually watch all the videos, read the blog posts and so on rather than just 
hopping on and commenting and hopping off as well we really do appreciate when you actually take the time to enjoy what we've made for you and remember to check back later to find out who was the winner so with all three of my backgrounds ready i just had to assemble my cards and i wasn't actually going to show any of the assembling because i'd spent so much time on the backgrounds and with this being part of a hop i don't want my video to be too long but I did make a bit of a mistake on this one and I wanted to show you. So I'm using the cat and dog images in the floaties from the stamp set and also a sentiment from the stamp set on my alcoholing background. And because I wanted the cat's whiskers to be on the background, I did stamp that as well as my sentiment with Versafine Onyx Black ink, which is a slow drying ink. So I heat set it to try and make sure it would be dry but I probably should have heat embossed it because when I had got my images down and was adding some white gel pen detail to them I managed to smudge my sentiment. So here you can see I fixed that just with a wet cloth because that won't reactivate the alcohol ink because it is alcohol but you do want to be careful as this is vellum you don't want to make it pill by using too much water on it but that did clean it up and then as you can see here on the finished card I covered up the sentiment with a heat embossed banner sentiment instead and that's how I finished the first card. For the second card I used the sand castle from the stamp set this is the card with the ink blended background I also used a couple of the starfish and the same summertime sentiment I'd used on the first card. This one I stamped with Hero Arts Caramel Ink to give the impression that it's written in the sand. And for the third card, because I really liked how this background had turned out and I wanted it to take centre stage, I decided to keep it kind of elegant looking, which shows another way you can use this stamp set. And I just used a sentiment on this one, again using the caramel ink for a tone on tone look. And I finished off with some very narrow love from Lizzie Piloffs to give a slight frame all around. Here you can see some close-up pictures of the finished cards. Don't forget to leave a comment to be entered into the drawing. You can find the next stop on the hop in the description box along with links to the products used and to my blog post. If you haven't already subscribed you can do that by pressing the button on screen now and there's a couple of other videos there if you're done hopping and want to see more from me. There's also going to be some more hops soon so be sure to check back for those as well. Otherwise I'll thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!